Wow. Oh, my word. In Bradford, Drew visits what's left of one of England's dark satanic mills, where he gets down and dirty. What you want to do is you want to think of a number and you want to double it. I'm thinking of a number and half in it every time you, you open your cob. <laughs> in Bexhill, he finds some wings. You open to a little bit? No. <laughs> and wheels. It's a great escape. <laughs> And he does battle over prices in Hastings. Made me an offer I can't refuse. Um, 50 quid each. <laughs> That's refused. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Yeah, he's odd enough. I bought a turkey. <laughs> not for the, yeah, first, not for the first time. Ding dong. <laughs> in his hunt for treasure... They are not for sale. ..he bargains hard. Four and a half thousand for pack. Wow. And there's nothing he won't buy. How much does one of those run um, for? About 150,000. With help from his wife, Rebecca. Hey, that was a quick turnaround. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> At the headquarters of Drew Pritchard Antiques in Conway, everybody's busy. If we can't get it tomorrow, uh, we'd have to go on Friday. Drew is putting in an offer for a job lot of 24 refectory tents. They were made by the monks. By the monks themselves. Uh, put the bid in. Gone. Gone. There you go. Just spent 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> One job done, and it's on to the next. Drew's heading for the biggest building he's ever salvaged, and there may be pickings to match. It's just over two hours from Conway, across the Pennines, to Bradford. We're off to the very, 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 very industrial Bradford. The solid architecture of the West Yorkshire city is a legacy of the Victorian age. Home to hundreds of mills, Bradford was known as the wool capital of the world. This rich industrial history has been the back... We're off to Drummond's Mill, and it, uh, it was an old um, wool mill. Okay. And the, the, the current owners are going to redevelop it, and uh, they've got a ton of furniture they want to get rid of. The sprawling former wool mill still has stockpiles of the remnants from its industrial past, making it a perfect place for Drew to dig up some stylish and saleable objects. The current owner, Khalid Purvez, bought the building in 2000. His site manager is Yassine Mohammed. There's a lot of uh, furniture here uh, from the past. There is some uh, old machinery here. We know Drew's going to be wanting to do some deals. He's a bit of a wheeler dealer guy. Mr. Pavez is the same, has always done that. And we're up in town a bit along the line, you know. Hi there. Hi, I'm Tate. Hello there. How are you doing? Drew. Hi, Mr. Pavez. Nice to meet you, Drew. Yassine. Yassine, how are you doing? How are you doing? Blimey, have I got to go through all of this building? The whole place? Absolutely. It's huge. Monster of a site. It's a monster. Monster of a site, yes. I think we'd better get started. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lead on, show us yeah. where we're going. The development of Drummond's Mill over the last 130 years echoes the history of Bradford itself. Built in 1886, it was one of the largest plants in Yorkshire for the production of worsted cloth. In the 1930s, the failing mill was turned around by an Eastern European Jew, Solomon Salka, and is now being given new life again by Khalid Purvez, an entrepreneur originally from Pakistan. We thousands here, you know, yeah. in the heydays, but when we took it over, there about 80, 90 people. Well, we've got plans to regenerate the site. We're looking at getting small businesses okay. back in. One of our tenants here is a World Curry Festival, and that chaps. sounds good. Yeah, yeah, like so him. Bradford oh, yeah. obviously famous for curry. Absolutely. He's Absolutely. looking at setting up a cooking school here. That's uh, a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Really? So uh, those are well, some I can't of the... cook. <laughs> I'd come to that cooking school. You're yeah, <laughs> good at eating curry. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Mills, big old factories, have always been fantastic hunting grounds for me. When, from when I first started doing this, we were going into old factories, and they just turn up the best things sometimes. And you just never know what you're going to get. True to form, it doesn't take Drew long to spot his first potential purchase. Expecting. There is a wheeled medical trolley. 
in nice old original paint. I don't know what a medical trolley would be doing here. It looks like a first aid room. Oh, it? yeah, that's probably, probably what it was. As early as the mid-19th century, mills like Drummond's would have had a first aid room, staffed by a nurse and even a doctor. This medical trolley is from the mid-20th century. With a bit of work, it could be worth about £400. And that camera yeah. there as well, yeah. that would be of interest. Behind that is a much later medical cabinet, probably from the late 60s, actually. It's not really a very old one. Um, but it has that look. It's got something about it. The cabinet, dating from the 1960s, has tubular legs, glass shelves and alloy handles. It could be worth about... I don't yeah. think so, yeah. 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 Cool, though. Original paint on it. OK, what would you, what would you want for these? And who am I dealing with? Who's the money? This is the money, man. And you're doing the deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those two chaps, they'd be of interest. For sure. What would you want for those? What are you prepared to oh, offer? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 180 for that one. OK. £100. 280 Can you do a bit better than that? I could. I think you're quite pleased with that one, though, aren't you? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 350 You know, I would have no. thought, you yeah. know. No. Three's your money, that's it. I was going to say more. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Pervez is extremely realistic. You see, not so sure. I think he wants a bit too much money off me today. We'll see. come a long way. Thank you. We'll let you have it, don't Thank I? Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at his face, you wanted more, didn't he? Yeah. You wanted more. Not going to happen. That's great. Thank okay. you. That's okay. lovely. Yeah, nice. That will end up in somebody's house, unusually, but it really will. The medical cabinet probably go into a restaurant. To make the trip worthwhile, Drew needs to find more than two good pieces at Drummond's Mill. He's got a lot of ground to cover. Wow. Oh, my word. It's a great room. Wow. It's pretty unique. There's not really a space like this anywhere in the country. And it's listed as well. Grade 2 listed. Grade two listed yeah, yeah, Grade 2 listed. Wow. It's an astonishing piece of architecture. Uh, the manufacturing method where they've created these huge bows to support the ceiling belly of a whale. It's quite incredible space. The plan is to convert this floor to be the hub of a venue for functions and conferences, with an eye on the lucrative wedding market in particular. This might be of interest. What would be good to know, what did they do in this room? Because then I, I know what that's for, then. Yeah. Uh, originally, this was used for sorting the wool. So they would get the raw wool up here. And uh, sort it all out, you know, uh, before it went down for further processing. Would it, so would it come in rolls then? No, it would come in bales. Uh, bales, so the, would they put the bales on that? The then? bales on that and move it around, you know. It's a good retail piece for our fashion buyers. Um, you can see that in High Street store. Lots and lots of folded jeans and jumpers or shirts on that. It's exactly the sort of thing we want to buy. Date and could be worth around £600. It's got that nasty chipboard on the top. That's the only... That's not original. The rest of it is. Go on, then. What would you want for this one, Yas? I don't know why I've asked you. I'm just, like, <laughs> punching myself in the face. <laughs> what, have you, what are you prepared to offer for it? 25 quid. <laughs> <laughs> is that much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 75 pounds. Yeah. 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 Salvage Supreme Old Drew Pritchard is at Drummond's Mill, an enormous disused wool mill in Bradford. The size of this building is just enormous, isn't it? He's bidding on a ramshackle pine mill trolley. This might be of interest. But Drew's playing hard. What are you prepared to offer for it? 25 quid. <laughs> <laughs> is that much? Yeah. <laughs> 75 pound. I'm, I'm, looking at it. I'm looking at him, yeah. I think we've got to be looking at at least double that, I would have thought. I can, I can see this being... Uh, really? I can see this sitting somewhere very pretty. It's not now, is it? No. It's, there's a long way, there's a long way for that to go to it's, be pretty. It's got great potential. Like me and T, it needs a lot of work to be pretty. <laughs> it's got to be three figures, hasn't it, Professor? Or an underpound, all right? There you go. The there you go. Reason, <laughs> Again. <laughs> They carry on searching through the acres. 
Oh, here you go. These, these might be of interest, guys. We go into another sort of ante room to this one, and I see two filing cabinets. Now, filing cabinets are really mundane items, and I get offered them all of the time. But these two have got a bit of an edge. This pair of filing cabinets are made of folded steel, which has been painted to look like wood. The handles and card holders are brass, labelled made in the USA. Together, they could be worth £800. Are they wood? No. No. Look at them. They look wood. It's painted to look like wood. I think they're, I think they're actually described as a reinforced wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you get your extra wood. value. <laughs> they do need quite a lot of work. That's the only... If they're viable, if they're the right price, perfect for home offices. What would you want for these, then, guys? I'm, not, I'm asking you, I'm not asking you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You're not asking me this time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, you know, make make, make because it's not for us, as you see, you know. They're a bit rough and ready, but they've got something going on. What you want to do is you want to think of a number and you want to double it. <laughs> I'm thinking of a number and half in it every time you, you open your gob. <laughs> <laughs> um, 100 quid the pair. Come on, you can do a bit better than no. that. Really? Four, four. There's two of them. I know, but th there's that's putting me off that rust line there where the paint's come off. That's a bit of a pain, really. <laughs> but that shows his uh, authenticity, doesn't it? But it is. <laughs> you should be an antique dealer. <laughs> be... Look at his face. <laughs> 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 Day was a pair of filing cabinets, and the colour has got a slight purple tinge to it as well, with the old brass and the bronzed finish, and the water slide and the card holders. It's got a lot going on, um, and they're not too big, and they don't look industrial. You know, it's got everything. They've got the lot, those two. So I'm hoping they restore well. There's a slight problem with the, the tall medical cabinet, but one of the doors is slightly bent, so it pushes too far in, so we're going to have to take the door off and straighten it. And that's what this business is like. Every now and again, you get something, it looks like it needs nothing, and you'll lose straightforward, clean polish, photograph, price correct, description, website sold. He was a great guy, and uh, I had a pretty good idea where the deal was to be done, and how far we could, you know, go with the guy. Drew was uh, as expected. We always knew we'd have a bit of fun with him. You've got to have a bit of a laugh, otherwise it's going to be a bit boring. Excellent. Thank you so much. Excellent. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Good luck with it. Everything today was yeah. Thank you very very much. Fun. All right. Thank Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. Much. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, well, good stuff, though. The trolley's nice. You like that, don't you? Yeah. Just a really cool drinks trolley. Go in the corner, you're, you're yeah. putting your drinks inside it. Bottles on the top there, you know. And you can wash bag. <laughs> Take it everywhere around the living room. It'd be easy to find you in the morning then as well, wouldn't it? Well, where's true? Well, it's always attached to that yeah. bit of furniture. Here's the drinks cabinet. <laughs> Follow the bit of rope. <laughs> Back in North Wales, someone is really pleased to see Drew. Hello! Hello Are you meant to go see me? <laughs> then it's down to business. Bosch. Metal filing cabinets, faux wood, in, uh, American ones. All yours, Gav. Get stuck in. The thing is, I don't, there's so much of this stuff hanging around now here. I need all this sorted straight away, Lord. Yeah. We're, get, we're getting behind. Yeah. So, anyway, all yours. The filing cabinets are first into the workshops. True brought this cabinet, and as you can see, it's all gone rusty at the bottom. It's only a wood stain, but let it dry. Go over it with French polish, that should seal the colour in. The dark you want it, you just keep going over it and over it. It looks shiny now, but it will fade. <laughs> with these two ready for their close-ups, Gavin moves on to the medical cabinet. After that's had a quick wipe down, it's over to Carl, whose many skills include the intricate art of locksmithing. He's adjusting the lock there we go. so that it will fit a universal key. And right, the little lug is what raises and lowers the different gates on the keys. By filing off these little lugs, we can just make a master key then. Pop it up, damaging the TNG that's underneath. 
The tattered old sheet of chipboard is protecting a panel of pine tongue and groove, or T and G. Put the metal plate in just to use as a lever for my hammer, so I've got max in the thing. Just glad they included it. When the chipboard finally comes off, the tongue and groove is revealed. But there's another problem. It's too new now, so I'm going to have to age it. It'll look old. With the lock mechanism carefully adjusted, it goes back together. Ready for its moment of truth. Let's see if it actually works. Yep, that's good. And cleans up the wheels. Then a quick coat of wax. It's good, that. Quite a good colour match. And it's ready to roll. Drew and T are off on their travels again. They've heard about a dealer with good taste and a large shop where they might be able to bag a bargain. They've set their sat nav for Bex Hill in Sussex, a good six hour drive from Conway. For this trip, I need to make that pay. It has to be really good, different individual items. Often overshadowed by neighbouring Hastings, the sedate seaside town of Bexhill on Sea has a secret funny bar. Once home to comedians, including Spike Milligan, Ed Landy, who runs a business called Ears of Style. In this bit of Sussex, there's an awful lot of antique shops. A lot of them are the flowery, white, horrible, overpainted furniture brigade. But you get the odd one is a proper dealer, and this guy is. Owner Andy Trout has been in the trade for 30 years, ever since answering a job advert for a house clearing business. His current shop, Eras of Style, is an elegant antiques emporium based at an old railway station. I like good English furniture, um, decorative items as well, so anything that takes the eye, really. That's a really cool building. Hello. Good morning, Drew. Andy, how are you doing? Hey. Thank you. Hi, Hello, Hi, How are you doing? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Let's get cracking. Come on in. Oh, oh that's better. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. Limey. So what was this place, then? It was the end of a branch line. It's a station? Yeah. Wow. It's all west. It's pretty grand, isn't it? I love it. Wicked. I like everything in it. It looks brilliant. So you're open seven days a week here, are you? We're seven days a week. Seven days yeah. a week. Full on. It's a mission. It is a mission, isn't it? People don't realise how hard it is to run something like this. I keep it stocked up. Oh, I like it. Oh, you've got some great stuff here. Look at those, aren't they lovely? Andy is going to be easy to deal with. He's a dealer and of long standing, so it's going to be straightforward. I like those. Yeah, they're very decorative, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. First thing I see is when I come into the shop are a pair of... Well, I think they're a pair of art. They're original, are they? They are original, yeah. We actually bought them from a good friend of ours that um, sadly is no longer with us. She had them in her garden in France. Just terracotta? Yeah. When I saw the statue initially, I thought it was 750 for the pair, and I put it straight over and I thought, oh, that's a steal, I'll have those. Is that for the pair? It's not, I'm afraid. The one I at the back so. I was just side, thinking, I was yeah. just, I was just thinking, that's a good price. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really well modelled. One of the statues is already sold, but this angel dates from the late 19th century, when there was a revival in the use of terracotta. Standing four foot tall, there's some damage to it, which has been repaired. It could still be worth around £1,000. I like that. 450. Architectural salvage specialist Drew Pritchard is at Eras of Style. I like everything in it. It looks brilliant. An antique shop in Bexhill on Sea. He spotted a pair of statues. I like those. One of them is sold, but the angel is interesting, as long as the price is right. I'll take a bid on it. Yeah, cool. Four fifty. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was just... It's missing the sword, and it's yeah. the girl, and it's got the cross on the front of the head there, which are all things that I don't think are... Anyway, that's my problem. Um, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's a bail. It's a good deck, really, for me. Yeah. 
600 pounds, 600 pounds, 600 pounds. It's mileage. Yeah, this, uh, if I could make 150 pounds on it, I'd be unhappy. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, thank you. No, we'll have that. There's no work to do to the Angel. All we will do is give it a dust, a clean, make sure there's no flaking paint left on it, and that's it. That's all she needs. The attractive bit is the deterioration in the condition. That distressing is what, to me, makes it attractive. If it was in perfect condition, I wouldn't look twice at it. Now he's got his own personal angel. Drew's ready to take flight. Quite like the look of that. Little carriage lamb, that one. Yeah. So just a train, well, train or carriage, but it's a train, isn't it, really, usually? Hang out on the wall like that. And then when I picked it up, I realised it's actually, um, will hang on the wall, and then that weighted ball section levels it. So wherever you go, you know, the train's doing this and moving around the carriage, that stays right there. The brass carriage lamp, dating from the early 20th century, has a clever design, allowing it to be wall or table mounted. It could be worth around £250. Yeah, I like that. It's got, it's got something going on, hasn't it? 85 quid. What's the, any, what's the best on that one? 60 quid. 60 quid? Yep. All right, yeah, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Sold. Nice one, thank you. The lamp is very simple. All we're going to do is give it a dust and a rewire. That's it. I can do anything else to it. I don't like polished up brass at all. Drew might be interested in, but they're buried under a mountain of stock and absolutely massive. This is what you were talking about? Yes. Wow, I see what you mean. What sort of age are they? Late 70s, 80s? Yeah, 80s, yeah. Why as a ton, so it'd be nice for tea to load up. If you... <laughs> on my own. Have <laughs> you had them one? Oh, I actually have, but I haven't really been able to display them. They came from um, Savile Row in London. I bought them because we've got space to house them. The two enormous shop counters are each over nine foot long with nine drawers. The metal substructure is covered by tropical hardwood. They could be worth £4,000 for the pair. How much are they? I'll do one price, the space really true. Really, really cool looking. Um, have almost a, a flush, invisible nine drawer layout at the back. They're completely uh, in the round, so they're freestanding, so they can go anywhere. Love it when you find something that I've not seen before. Really, it's really interesting. If they can be presented to somebody in the right way, they will sell very well, with looking at them, not much work at all. Yeah, they should be two and a half grand each, really. Really? I like them. Hardly anything to do. Da -da 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 -da. Have they got enough class and style about them to, to go again? Yes, they have. I think so. I definitely do. Mm. Can't beat quality. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I had to ask. <laughs> No, that's for nothing. Two grand, two grand, two grand, two grand. Get subbed in. Okay. Two grand for the pet. Yeah. Right. Delivered. See? <laughs> 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 Do they set the doors out? How on earth, how on earth are we going to get those out? Today was very good. I managed to buy a couple of decent pieces and then a couple of outstanding pieces and meet a new dealer. Fingers now, fingers. So, all in all, really good. The standout item of the day are the extraordinarily heavy pair of... So the great escape! <laughs> they could go back into retail and they'll probably end up in either Los Angeles, New York or London. It really will be one of those. The little brass uh, carriage lamp, I just liked it. Anything that can be hung on the wall and used as, as an uplighter tends to sell well. The statue will probably go to Liberty, into the shop there, and it will be bought privately. Andy, pleasure, thank you. Lovely, thanks for coming in. You've got a great big space now to fill. Yeah, <laughs> won't take long. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> thank you, cheers. All right, mate. Nice thank you. Cheers. See you. Safe journey. You feel the weight on? Yeah. <laughs> really? You feel that yeah. then? That was rocking and rolling, wasn't it then? It might cost us a few quid in diesel to get out. Yeah. That was good. And four. 
Sol continuing his quest for fresh merchandise. The next day, Drew goes into battle. Just an eight mile drive from Vex Hill. The tiny town grew up around Battle Abbey, built to commemorate the Battle of Hastings in 1066, which actually took place here, seven miles away. Look at that. It's great, isn't it? Wow. The defeat of the English King Harold by the Norman William is probably the most notorious date in British history. We're going to yesterday's world to meet the owner, Peter. And um, it's basically a museum, but he is king in the building, is up for grabs. Yesterday's world is a museum of shopkeeping run by Peter Ball. It's a trip down memory lane full of authentic shop displays going back over a hundred years. Museums of this kind rarely let go of their stock, so this could be a golden opportunity for Drew. We collected uh, boot fairs, second-hand shops, and even auctions, you know, and the collection has come together over a number of years. Peter has decided to close down part of the museum, which is why he's selling off some of the stock. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? Drew. Peter Ball. Peter, nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you. And you? Nice. Nice. Hope you, you had a good yeah. journey. We did, we Welcome did. Welcome to yesterday's world. I've been down to battle before, it's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I'm very keen to look around here as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, guys. Let's have a look around that house. So oh, blimey, look, look at this. <laughs> this is really good, look at that. Many wow. years of collecting. And some of the stuff in the bags and that are real. They are actual... Biscuits from the past, we've not made them up, they just... Really? You can see the mould on some of them. <laughs> oh, God, don't yeah. recommend... Uh, if you want to buy them, terrific, <coughs> but I wouldn't recommend the... No, them. not for me. Oh, look at that, where the money goes across. Yeah. I remember one of those in Clan, didn't I? Wow. As I walk into the museum, it looks good already. I'm seeing a few things that are really authentic. I mean, not just a bit authentic, not just copies, not just, you know, things that have been made up, totally unrestored, original common vernacular pieces that you don't see everywhere. So what's the plan here then? We'll go into the display, have a look, touch, feel, you know, okay. and then make an offer. Peter's great. He seems like just like talking to a dealer. He loves the place. He understands the items and he's totally immersed in it. So it's, it's going to be a good day. Some of this stuff you look at and go, what, what, what's that? Yumbo, what's Yumbo? Oh, I like those tins you've got up there. Tin canisters like these would originally have contained tea. Imported from China in Victorian times, this one is worth around £200. The amethyst-coloured glass bottle with its gilt lettering spelling out saccharum, Latin for sugar, is around the same age and could be worth around £300. Those there, what would yeah. you want for those? I don't honestly know. Antique dealer Drew Pritchard is at Yesterday's World in Sussex. <laughs> this is really good, look at that! A small museum which is downsizing and offloading some stock. It's been a magical trip back in time to a world of yesteryear. And Drew has spotted a collection of Victorian tea caddies that are simply dripping with style. What do you want for those? Made me an offer I can't refuse. Um, 50 quid each. That's refused. <laughs> so, so you do know what you want, then. I was judging you then, see how, yeah, see how, much, see how much you knew. Yeah. <laughs> They're really desirable. They're very collectible. There's two that I'm really interested in initially. Now, one of them's a display. Um, it's got saccharin written on it, which is, you know, it's just a good word. And the colour of the glass is very, very good. So how much do you want for them then? Say the black one, number two, because that's the one I really like. See how that japanning on it's all gone off and the saccharin jar, if it's not damaged. Those two. Couple of hundred for the two. Could we do, um, do 150? I'll do 175 with you. Thank you very much. There you go. Damn it, he knows all the prices. <laughs> Bugger. This place is brilliant. These are good. I like that one, that yeah. one, that one, and that one. They're interesting. The enameled barber shop. That's gold leafed and painted. And 
plate, that glass behind, strangely, is called Miranese. And uh, I used to have to clean that by hand, it's horrible. Uh, that would probably be of interest. Shame it's been overpainted. That would be of interest. And yeah, those three, those three yeah. would be as well. Let's kick off. 100 quid. Mm, I'll take a little bit more of this. Okay. Right. I'm thinking around about 160, 170. Okay, we've settled on 150. Then. There you go, man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Just very attractive. Just in your bathroom, just one little sign. They're interesting, they're fun, they're authentic, and I don't see many of them around. Welcome to electric uh, display. Oh, yes, look at that. Some of these lamps are the original lamps, 1940. Straight away in the window, I'm spotting these uh, iridescent glass industrial uh, lenses. The light fittings are molded double thickness glass with a mirrored iridescent finish. They were made in Eastern Europe in the 1930s and could be worth around £150 each. Great looking, great sellers, very unusual and they've not been reproduced either. So it's a finite resource. The ones that are left are the only ones that's ever going to be. So those three there, yep. right, three of those I'd be interested in. Uh, this one, if it's an old one, it, it is. There's one other light fitting, which is prismatic holophane, a type of glass which bounces the light around to create a soft glow. It could be worth around £250 when... Re is that your best price, or are you trying to give me a heart? Well, you know what you're talking about, so I'm always going to start a little yeah. bit down. A little bit, but that's only a little bit. It's only a little I'll bit. be fair with you. Yeah. 125 Yeah, no, that's fine. Happy with those. And we haven't ruined your display, which I'm most pleased about. Uh, this little little work stool. This is a welder's stool. One of the best things I've seen so far in the electrical shop is this fantastic uh, three-legged stool. This type of stool we commonly refer to as a welder's chair, and they've usually got that sort of very old-fashioned, thick plastic, movable backrest. And the same with the seat. Everything about it's cool. You could literally put it anywhere. So I'm going to have to buy that as well. I've got to have that one. The three-legged workman's stool with a wooden seat carries a maker's mark from the 30s and could be worth £350. OK, and how much for him? Is he for sale? How much are you going to offer? Can I do for him? One eighty. Two. I've been fair with these. Good man. Yeah. Tea. I've seen something behind you. Look at that sign. Why would you particularly be interested in I... that? <laughs> That's, that is the best enamel sign I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> For cats and kittens, puts pussy in fine form. I don't suppose you'd want to sell that, would you? To be honest, no, no because it's free it's together. The, the logos, I mean, look how clever yeah. that is. The yeah. person who's done that. In 20th century museums go of just common life, you know, the things that we're surrounded by. This is one of the best. Look at that one. Oh, that's not one of that ones. It's in the middle of a little town, but the collection is astonishingly good and incredibly authentic. There's nothing fake in here, and that is extremely difficult to find. The displays range from the Victorian era all the way up to the 1970s. These. These. Where'd you get those from? I think they were just brought with a bit of a collection and then we just put them all together. Just got the two? I think there's only two of them. Never seen little ones like that. I've bought the big ones, loads of them. Whenever they come up, they're hard to find, they're expensive and they're desirable. But the two little ones, never seen them. I think they're even more desirable than the big ones. Errors in wooden frames date from the 1970s and could be worth around £400 each. What would you want for that pair? About 100 quid. 100 quid the pair? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. much. Yeah, I'm being good to you. You are, there. You got me children's prices. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a pair that small. No. Super. Should have pitched the price on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Drew's not finished yet. On his trip to the good old days, he also hooks a couple more of those large tea tins. 150. What, each? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Sure? Yeah, all right. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, he's off. 
Today I enjoyed it. I got to look around this museum and I saw an awful lot of things that I haven't seen before. So, again, learning loads and loads of things. I saw lots and lots of things that I'd have definitely bought but didn't have the opportunity to. But I think maybe not now, but not never, that's for sure. The iridescent glass light shades, again, great. Uh, all of the tea jars, great. And then the two little fairground mirrors, I've not seen those either. So all in all, everything I bought today was a wonderful group of things. And do you know, they're, they're just what we do. They'll sell quickly, they're super attractive, and they're not going to cost a fortune. <laughs> right then, done? Yeah, all in. Thank you so much. Well, it's been great place. meeting you. And you, mate. Yeah, and you. Look forward to seeing you again you. sometime. Thanks, really. Steve. Thank right. you. Cheers. Really enjoyed your company. And we'll see you. God bless. I found Peter a joy, actually. It was great fun. Good, nice, easy pro to deal with. Best thing today, that little industrial chair. Really like that. Mm -hmm. They're designed to work in factories. They're usually absolutely knackered. Yeah. And that one is like literally like new. Is it the sort of chair you'd have had if you worked in a factory? What, what a very little use. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where you get that I'm lazy <laughs> from. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I work harder than anybody I know. Well, do you not know anybody? <laughs> do you live on a desert <laughs> island? <laughs>when they get back to Wales, there's a double hall to unload, starting with those huge shop counters. I mean, they're seriously heavy. Wow. The Italian... Are you going to get them off? Gav power. We always joke about measuring the weight of an item in gavs. On the, on the gavin scale, this is a four gavin, yeah. I mean, it's like... I mean, it's absolutely not going anywhere. Feel so inferior. <laughs> it's Gav's unbelievable how he how he managed it. He actually ended up being a, a one Gavin tea. Uh, the quality when you slide those drawers in and out, it just goes beyond quality. And for the very large items to the rather more delicate. All together like that. It works. It just looks. It's the way of laying it out. Is it? Is it? Good collection. Gavin gets to work giving the welder stool a good sand and polish. And it's only a matter of days before his hard work pays off. It's snapped up by a British expat living in Tokyo for his minimalist new home. And the stool isn't the only thing to have sold. Drew is inundated by an international array of customers impressed with his new stock. From Drummond's Mill, the medical cabinet and trolley find buyers almost immediately and are packed up for transit to Leipzig and Dusseldorf in Germany. The mill trolley is bought by one of America's leading antique dealers. From eras of style, the carriage lamp is going to a private customer in Glasgow and the statue is heading for the front garden of a new home in the Netherlands. These have been bought by a top businessman in Brussels for his inner city mansion. Also in Brussels, the glass saccharin bottle has been bought by a translator working for the UN, where it's taking pride of place in her flat. The barber signs have been bought by a design company for a new barber shop in Oslo. And the Miranese haircutting sign has gone all the way to a town in Cambridgeshire. Susan Geyer is a fan of Drew's quirky style and has bought from him in the past. The sign reminds her of 25 happy years as a hairdresser. When I saw the haircutting sign, it was love at first sight, and we have the summer house, and I thought it'd be a perfect place to put it. Ta -da! And it will bring happy memories of my earlier career in hairdressing. <laughs>